Hello, my name is James Conrad, and it's my pleasure to be your instructor for the CBT Nugget Series 70-680 for configuring Windows 7. As we take a look at this series, I want to identify some of the different topics we're going to be talking about here in brief. One of those is going to be installation, which is a big topic on Windows 7 right now. Uh, we still had to, of course, install in other operating systems as well, but they're making a bigger emphasis on some of the automation and some of the additional methods you can use to install Windows now. Of course, you can always do a clean install. We're also going to be talking here about how to upgrade existing machines, and you can only upgrade Windows 7 machines, as well as to migrate machines from one operating system to the next. We'll take a look at working with system images as well. And this is going to be important because you can use these images to quickly and easily duplicate a computer to multiple other destinations. We'll take a look at all these topics here, and that'll take a, a good part of our first part of the series. We'll look also at devices. Of course, you always have to have that struggle of getting the right drivers and making sure that things are compatible and <laughs> making sure something doesn't blue screen you and all of that. We'll address those issues as well as disk management, which of course is going to be a crucial area of concern because you need to make sure that the operating system is properly placed as well as any data that you may have. And we'll address applications also. This is a big thorn in the side for a lot of organizations because they may have applications that are very difficult to make compatible with Windows 7 or whatever <laughs> Windows operating system they happen to be running. And then we'll address also Internet Explorer and all of the various configurations that you can use with that to make Windows 7 a better experience for your users. And as we continue with the 70-680, we'll also take a look at networking with IP version 4 and IP version 6. We'll talk about some of the numbering schemes involved in IP version 4 and how you can kind of decipher what the IP addresses mean. And we'll also take a look at the transitions to go to IP version 6, which Microsoft is starting to emphasize a little bit more right now. We'll take a look at wireless networking, and of course the big part of that will be to properly secure it. We'll take a look at remote administration so that you can remotely access desktops or remotely help users, as well as how to access resources. We'll t make sure that the file shares and the NTFS permissions are all lined up just right for you. We'll take a look at authentication issues, which is uh, certainly important to make sure that you have the right users getting authenticated properly, as well as user account control, which started with Windows Vista and which some people didn't like. But you'll find that it's less obs obtrusive in Windows 7. And we'll also address here remote access so that even when you're not actually in your office, you can still connect to your office and get the resources that you might need. And then as we get to the end of our series here, we'll be addressing things like mobile computing. Now, this is going to be important in terms of things such as the power management of your user's laptops. Uh, one of the complaints that people have is the shortness of the battery life. So we'll talk about some ways to extend that out as well as other mobile topics. We'll take a look at monitoring systems. You do need to know what's going on on certain systems at various times, especially if you need to identify what could be causing uh, crashes or problems. We'll take a look at performance as well as some ways to improve the performance you get at a Windows 7 and Windows updates, which is very important to make sure that Windows does stay secure and potentially more stable as well. Sometimes there will be unavoidable situations that occur that cause a system to um, perform poorly or to have catastrophic problems. So we'll talk about how to uh, do a system recovery as well as how to do a backup of the operating system. Uh, this is you can do to create an image of the entire hard drive and or user data. And then we talk about how to recover that data as well, as also we'll discuss how to safely recover an existing operating system that you might be able to repair and bring it back to a healthy state. Well, I got to tell you, I really enjoyed recording this series very much for you, and I hope that you also enjoy watching and listening to it, and let's go ahead and get started.